Hello and welcome to the first of four tutorials where I'm going to be looking at working in the 3D world. The first tutorial is about setting our layers in 3D space so that we can see them and move them around them and to be able to work with them in a sensible way. The second tutorial is going to look at setting up a particle system where the particles just exist. They don't move around, they don't go up and down, they just exist statically in 3D space for the whole length of our composition so that as the camera moves around looking between the different layers it zips past these particles giving a real sense of movement, of parallax, of space and volume in the 3D world. The third tutorial is going to show a ridiculously easy and quick way of animating a camera so that you can quickly get between one layer and another perfectly and get the best results. And the final tutorial is going to look at finessing that camera so that we can just change things like how zoomed in we are and how we want to move the cameras on paths and things. So this first tutorial is about creating or moving our layers in 3D space. And if you've downloaded the project file, you'll have something that looks like this. The top layer, I'm just going to solo them one by one, is just a particle system that's been applied. If you look at the effects controls, you'll see that I've applied CC Particle World, which is a 3D particle system, please note. We're going to be looking at that in the second tutorial, so I'm just going to turn the solo switch off and turn the eyeball off for that. We'll deal with that in the second tutorial. And then I've got four pre-comps, which are note all 3D layers. And the pre-comps consist of, if I double click you'll see, they've got a piece of text, which is a number, and a solid layer. And that's all they've got. There's nothing particularly special about them. But I've named them 1, 2, 3 and 4, so that when we actually move between them, we know which layer is which. And the final layer is a 2D layer, and it's just a background. And on that particular layer, I have applied two effects. I've applied the ramp effect, and I've applied colorama, which just gives, well, it just makes ramps look that little bit better. Have a play when you have a chance, if you don't know how I've done it. It's quite fun. Okay, so I've got these four layers, and I want to move them around in 3D space. One of the things we obviously want to do is create a camera so that we can actually move around in 3D space and sometimes you want to create a camera straight away we don't have to but for the demonstration purposes I'm going to create a camera which is layer new camera or as you can see that's a control alt shift C on a PC command option shift C on a Mac and I'm going to go for the standard 50 millimeter camera and click OK so a camera has been created still got these layers in 3D space and I'm now ready to think about moving them around so I'm just going to pull my layers up a bit and I'm going to select these layers. These layers are named 1, 2, 3 and 4. And incidentally, if you do use this technique, this camera technique I'm going to talk about, it is actually quite sensible to name the layers that you will be moving in 3D space with a number and then its name. So if it's an asset of some sort, you just put this is the first layer I want to look at. So you put a 1 and then the layer name. So that when it comes to actually searching between your layers and knowing which ones you want to animate towards, you've got the numbers. That's why I've got 1, 2, 3 and 4. And I'll often refer to these as layers 1, 2, 3 and 4, even though at this particular moment in time, they are in fact layers 3, 4, 5 and 6. So when I talk about 1, 2, 3 and 4, I'm actually talking about these pre-comps or the targets, if you like. The target layers in order that I actually want to look at them when I do my camera animation. So I'm going to click on the 3 and drag down to the 6, hit P for position and shift R to get the rotation properties up. Now, a little word about rotation and orientation. I'm just going to click away so they're all des deselected. If you do rotation, notice that you have the option for complete revolutions and a certain amount of degrees. So, if I say start at 0 degrees and go round to 355 degrees, the camera is going to rotate all the way around to that particular point. However, if I choose orientation and I was to animate it, say, from 1 degree to 355, rather than going all the way around, it would just quickly shift from one point to another. So orientation is just going to quickly go by the shortest possible route to get from whatever angle it starts at to whatever angle it finishes at, whereas rotation will always bear in mind this first figure and will give you complete rotations. Now that's going to be important 
when we actually animate these layers and we want the camera to move around because if we want the camera to do complete rotations as it's going between targets we're going to want to animate the rotation and not the orientation so I'm not going to change those but in actual fact I don't animate anything when I'm setting up my layers I want to move them around in 3D space but there's a, a great shortcut to be able to see what you're doing but there's also a little bit of a gotcha particularly if you've got a camera selected so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to drag out the X dimension that's the first dimension that's left and right for all four layers so I'm going to hold the shift key because I want these to go quite far so I'm holding the shift key which makes the move ten times quicker pulling it one way pulling the next one the next way and then the next one the next way maybe a bit further and the last one a bit further that way it's going to pull it up a bit so we can perhaps see more of these layers and then I'm going to do the Y dimensions now obviously I can't see these now and that's quite annoying so I do actually want to see them but I can't actually see them at the moment and so what I'm tempted to do and this is where you've got to be careful one thing or another either you could just scroll out and you can see roughly where they are in 3d space just by using your wheel on your mouse to scroll out or alternatively you go up to the view menu and you say oh look there's an option here that says look at all layers now you've also got look at selected layers so you could actually select particular layers and select those and I think you'll find that I get confused between the two sometimes so I, I select all my layers and then I look at all layers but if I select look at all layers whilst I've got a camera as my active view just here what will happen is the camera will sort of zoom right out and be miles away from the layers which isn't actually what I want so if I just show you this here if I'm going to go to my views here and go to two views horizontal okay now I haven't moved these in Z so let's actually move these in Z as well so pull them back and pull this one forward and this one forward a bit perhaps this one back a bit okay so they're in 3d space I can't really tell where they are but I'm now going to click on the camera that's where the camera is now I've got my active camera selected if I now click view look at all layers look what happens to the camera I've got to zoom right out now the camera has in fact, I can't do it. I can't even get out far enough to actually see that camera. There it is. There's the camera. It's pulled right back so that it can view all these layers. And here they are, over here. So that's not what we want because the camera is now zoomed so far out it's of no use to us. So you do need to be very careful what view you're in, not in an active camera view, when you actually select that command. So I'm going to Control z to undo that. So it's back to where it originally was. Now, there is another option. So I'm clicking on this side. And where it says active camera, notice you've got custom views, custom view one, two, three. If you select a custom view, I'm going to make sure my camera is selected so you can see it again. And I now choose view, look at all layers. All layers are shown, but the camera has not changed its zoom. So I can now animate the camera around these layers as and how I wish without having a problem with it zooming incredibly far out so it's quite important that you're not in your active camera when you actually want to set up this look at all layers or even look at selective layers because even if you're looking at selected layers you'll still get a similar sort of problem you must make sure that you're in one of the custom views and then you can choose view in fact I'm wrong one so it's over here custom view and then you can choose view look at all layers and then the camera is unaffected so that's just a little gotcha, something that you need to be careful with when you're choosing this option. But as you can see, by choosing that option to look at all layers, just going to take this so it fits, so that I'm looking at all layers, all layers now become visible to me and I can kind of get a sense of, of perspective. I haven't done an awful lot on Y, so I might want to perhaps do a bit more on my, my Y, just make these layers move around a bit so that we can get a better view when we're actually finished. Let's get to that last layer and pull it up a bit more. And if you go off screen again, as long as you're in your custom view, there's no problem then to go back to view, look at all layers, bang. You, you can see all the layers and you can still click back on your camera and you can see where your camera originally starts off with. Now, for the animation purposes we're going to be doing, the camera isn't actually going to be looking at any layer to start off with, but that's not a problem. So this is how you move these layers around. And if you turn around and say, well, you know what, I'm, I'm not really happy with that, it's too high, then you can still go back and hold the shift key and you can just pull them back to whatever seems sensible. The next thing I want to do is change the rotation of these layers. As I've mentioned before, don't change the orientation because that won't cause the camera to do complete rotations or decent rotations. It'll just take the shortest route between one thing and another. 
So I'm going to choose X rotation. I'm going to rotate layer one. And, and then I'm going to choose Y rotation on layer two. And I'm going to choose Z rotation on layer three. And then I'm going to go down to layer four and I'm going to change X. I'm going to change Y. And I'm going to change Z and I'm going to go more than one rotation. So you notice down here I've got more than one rotation. So now I've set up my 3D layer. If I go back to my active camera, all I can see is nothing because as we see, if we go back to our custom view, we look at all those or we'll click on the camera, the camera's not actually looking at anything here except that 2D layer that we've got showing at the bottom of our composition here. So we'll always see that. But at least we haven't got the camera zoomed out to a ridiculous level because we had the wrong thing selected here. So now that we've got this created, we're going to move on to the next tutorial, which looks at the 3D particle system that stays up all the way through the composition. And one thing I mentioned, I'm bound to make this mistake. I quite often select all these layers and then go to view, look at all layers. You don't need to have them selected unless you are doing look at selected layers. So if I make that mistake, please ignore me. Really, look at all layers or look at all layers regardless of what's selected. Look at selected layers. We'll always look at the particular layer that you select. So if I take one here, view, look at selected layers. I'm looking just at one, but if I take one and three, so just one and three is selected, and then I go view, look at selected layers. You can see there's even a shortcut for that. I can see one and three and whatever else might be there. Okay, so that's the first tutorial. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.